for the last part of the three types of techniques in Muay Boran, we're going to be focusing on the skills techniques. For part three, the skills techniques include all the minor and major techniques of Muay Boran. So what that means is that you start off with a clean slate, it doesn't matter if you've done other types of martial arts in the past or you have a different type of background. Everybody begins with all the fundamentals of Muay Boran and there's quite a bit starting from stance to the basic footwork, Yang Sam Kum, and then working all the exercises, working your way towards the drills and then putting all the uh, combinations and techniques together but basically starting from scratch all the way up to the advanced levels. That's what I mean about skills techniques. From the outset, the skills techniques look similar to Muay Thai techniques because the fundamentals are similar, right? You work your jabs, your cross, your hooks, your uppercuts, your basic knees, your basic elbows, basic defense, but then it progresses to more types of punching, more types of kicking, more types of elbows, knees, and so on. And then different types of defense tactics, and on and on. You want to think of skills techniques as the building blocks to become proficient as a Muay Boran stylist. So, sport slash major techniques are the moves that you can apply in everyday life, but in an advanced way. And so, I know I mentioned that self-defense techniques are for the average person to defend against the average aggressor. But when you have someone who is more of a seasoned martial artist, then the self-defense techniques take on a different role. It's more customized based on that practitioner's preferences. So for instance, for me, if I do a self-defense technique on someone, let's say, and I'm, you know, if, if I block if the hand is there, I'm going to grab it. If it's not there, I'm just going to transition into a different move. It's not going to matter to me because I know how to chain stuff, right? It's based also on timing, reaction, and so on. You're not just relying on one hit hoping that you're going to get your opponent because it's going to be a combination of things. It might be three, four, five, and six that's going to finish your opponent. And so if you have that skill level of adding combinations and chaining techniques, then you don't have to worry about how your opponent's gonna react because you're already thinking about four, five, and six before you even do the move. When you get to the higher levels, you can't rely on just a one punch knockout or a one kick strike that will finish your opponent and so on. Now you have to think about opponents that are gonna be able to counter, gonna be able to defend. What are you gonna do? Especially when you get to sparring mode, everyone who gets through the basic levels should start learning how to spar in real time. So this is how you know how to deal with pressure by sparring all the time. Some critics are gonna argue that Muay Boran doesn't have any sport-related techniques. But it's important to understand that as an ancient fighting art, it also evolved into a gladiator sport. Prior to being outlawed in the 1920s when the techniques were just too dangerous for modern Muay Thai rules. And as I mentioned before, you can see some of these techniques applied in both Muay Thai and MMA fights. Because now you can think about certain moves that you can use in practical ways, or you can use certain moves when you're wearing the gloves, whether it's the big gloves or the small gloves. Sport slash major techniques seem more simple and direct, but the reality of it, it's more complicated because you're chaining them and you're adding them in combinations. So you have to build that skill, which you get through continuous training, continuous sparring, and, and just building from there. Is your stance solid so that when you strike, there's power? Are you blocking with the right angle so that you can defend yourself properly? Are you working the drills so that you have better timing? You know when to grab someone. Even though Muay Boran has been outlawed in the 1920s when Thailand modernized, the self-defense techniques, the ancient military methods, and the gladiator skills have been preserved within this ancient fighting art. And it's up to the current Muay Boran practitioners to interpret these fighting skills, either for self-defense, for performance, or for sport competition.
as an advanced person, if it's a self-defense technique, I'm not just gonna grab the person right away. I'm gonna set them up, disorient them, make them dizzy, and then when the opportunity is there, take advantage of it and go for the finish. And that's how it works when you deal at the higher levels. You don't just go for the choke or the finish. People can defend that, especially if they're strong. But when they're incapacitated, when they're helpless, that's when you go for the finish. And that's the advanced levels. All these methods have to be taught through training. It's not something that you can just tell someone to do, right? Oh, this technique will work here because this person will do this and that person will do that. You don't really know what the person is going to do. It's unpredictable. Fighting is chaotic. It's unpredictable. The only way that a person can prepare is by working these skills day in and day out. So these fundamental skills techniques build the foundation where you can apply both the street and the sport aspect of Muay Baran. Now that I've given you a basic understanding of these three categories, it's up to you to decide which type of techniques best suit your needs. For some people, it's again, self-defense because that's all they have time for. Other people will be a mix of either self-defense and some agility slash performance techniques. For others, they're here just to do the sport slash major techniques. Those who focus on the skills techniques may not be interested in doing the self-defense or the agility techniques. It just depends on the individual and how much of a Muay Boran training they want. Once you start doing a technique and it doesn't feel like something that works for you, then try something else. Try a simpler technique. And if that technique is too simple, then try the fancier technique, right? And if you don't think that that's effective for you, then focus on the self-defense techniques and so on. So it's just trial and error, just like anything else. As I mentioned before, every Muay Boran stylist can be different from the next. Some may emphasize more of the agility training and others may focus more on the self-defense. For us, we do all three because that's our background. I've trained extensively in both Muay Thai and Muay Boran, and that's what I teach. So there's a lot of practicality in what we do, but there's also the agility stuff and there's also just the self-defense for normal people and so on. So there's something for everyone, really. You can click this link right here where I talk about the three main factors of being effective in any martial arts system. And that's basically the intensity levels, the understanding and the purpose. There's always gonna be differences when it comes to talking about the effectiveness of any technique because everybody has a different background. And some people have been doing Muay Baran for years, like we do. And some people are just barely diving into it and may not even understand it. You have people who do Muay Baran more for performance. So they prefer the agility stuff, right? The climbing moves. And may not really know that much about the sport aspect of it because they didn't do Muay Thai and they don't really train their techniques in a combative way. So that's another important aspect of it as well. For us, we don't blame any system per se. Even though we have our preferences, we prefer doing Muay Thai, we prefer doing Muay Moran because that's our expertise, that's what we do. And we've been doing it for years. For those of you who are just starting out in Muay Boran and are not quite sure whether this is for you, just ask yourself, do the techniques help you improve? Are you more confident with your skills? And if the answer is no, then ask yourself, what can you do to improve your skills? Can you focus on less techniques that are simpler to do? Can you start sparring? Try to find ways to improve your skill. And if you ask yourself and you're still not improving in Muay Boran, then perhaps it's just not the style for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's different. Everyone has different preferences. Perhaps you want to do a different type of style. That's fine. Try something else. We don't think about certain styles being ineffective, period, because there's always something good with each system, even if it's not as much as certain styles. Obviously for us, we're very practical because we have extensive Muay Thai and Muay Boran background. And so we know what's practical and we know what's more for other types of benefits, as I mentioned, more for agility, more for reflexes and so on, and more for just self-defense. But we never put any fighting system down because there's always a benefit that someone can get out of the style that they're doing. When people argue about practicality and they compare, let's say, even Muay Thai versus Muay Boran, it's because they have a background in one or the other. So you have people that may not understand Muay Thai because they only do Muay Boran. And then you have people who 
don't understand Muay Brand because they've been doing Muay Thai for so long. So it's the teacher's responsibility to guide the student, but not to tell them what to do. Because ultimately it's your decision what system works for you. As you progress in the martial arts, then you can decide for yourself, is this the style for me or not? Am I getting what I want out of this style? Do I want to do more self-defense? Do I want to do more agility performance? Or do I want to just go do the sport competitive route, right? That's ultimately your decision. And if that school or that teacher doesn't have that experience, then you need to go somewhere else, right? You need to train at a place that will give you that type of training. For instance, if you go to a Muay Brand school that only does self-defense or only does the agility slash performance, but that place doesn't offer skills techniques of a comprehensive system from beginner to advanced levels, or the teachers don't have experience competing and can't teach you the techniques in a very skilled and combative way, then perhaps it's time to look for a place with a comprehensive curriculum. So let's do a recap of the three techniques of Muay Boran. Part one, we talked about self-defense, which is mainly for the average assailant. And then part two, we talked about the agility slash performance techniques, which is really more for aesthetic value, but you also get athleticism if you train it. And it's also fun to do. And then part three, is where we talk about the skills techniques, which is all the fundamentals that you would need to start off training in Muay Boran to develop a foundation and then work your way all the way up to the advanced levels. Now, even though these are separate types of techniques, it's important to note that sometimes the self-defense techniques and say some of the skills techniques overlap with each other because even though you've got basic self-defense it becomes more advanced in some of the skills training right because then you're able to chain it if somebody tries to pull their hand out you can follow up with something else and so on and so and there's also some types of self-defense techniques that beginners may not be interested in doing or is just too tricky to do it's important to note that some of these techniques do overlap with each other. Martial arts is not a one size fits all. So even in Muay Boran, you will have different teachers teaching different aspects of Muay Boran, whether they focus more on the performance, others be more self-defense, others be more on the skills training. For us, we do all three because we'd like to have the student get the opportunity to choose what it is they want to get out of Muay Boran itself. So it's important to note that once you reach a certain level, you will have a different interpretation of the technique than someone else because your expertise are based on your preferences, your background, and so on. And there's so many factors involved in that, right? Whether you're physically taller, um, you prefer kicking over punching, you like to grab, you like to grapple, and so on. So there's so many different factors that affect the way you interpret a certain technique. But it doesn't mean it's not Muay Boran, it's still a Muay Boran technique. It's just a different interpretation based on your expertise. And so that's how it is with all the different fighting systems within Muay Boran style. So not all these techniques will be utilized because there's hundreds of them, but we make them available to everyone anyways and have them decide which techniques work for them. Because everybody's different, you know? Who am I to tell you what's right and what's wrong? I'm just here to guide you. That's my job as a teacher. Even though I have preferences of what works for me, inside or outside the ring, inside or outside the mats and so on, I'm not gonna tell someone what to choose. I will give them advice as to what I think about this technique and that, obviously, as a teacher. Ultimately, the only thing that matters is how a style makes you feel overall. It's not an individual technique. It's not an individual exercise or a drill. It's holistically everything put together. Because there's always different techniques for different purposes, different drills, different exercises, different learning tools. Once you understand which strategy works for you and you're able to use that and you have the resources available to you, having a school that trains the way you want to train, then you just put it together and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks or says about, oh, your, your stuff not working. Now, it works for you, and that's all that matters.
if you want to improve, focus on the training and focus on the purpose of your training. Focus on self-improvement and not what anyone else says.